Okay, folks, at this time, we're going to take a little break from our regular show. We're going to have a special interview portion. We're going to be joined by three-time X Division champion, former TNA wrestler, the one, the only, the Amazing Red. Amazing Red, thank you for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, we definitely appreciate you uh, taking some time out and uh, and being on our uh, little humble show, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, you were you were in uh, TNA for, for quite some time and uh, recently departed from uh, TNA, what what were like the uh, the main reasons for for you leaving TNA? Uh, it was like mostly the same thing with a couple other friends of mine, in Next Division. Uh, just character wise, or just you know me per se. I don't even know where was I heading, and I just wanted like a heads up on what I was doing. And usually, when I'm there or any one of my buddies, we kind of don't know what we're doing until like last minute. Oh, wow. I understand that's how things are done sometimes, you know what I mean? But it was just, I've been there since 2002. Mm -hmm. So it's like, a, I've been like maybe released from them maybe three or four times, I'm not sure. I can't remember. <laughs> and it, it's, it's been getting worse and worse, kind of like from, from my uh, perspective, you know? And I just wanted to know for sure if anything I was doing was going to have. Uh, any like impact later on, or if I'm doing this for a reason, and uh, it was just like a no, you know. So yeah. little by little, like uh, Jay wasn't feeling it, uh, Jay Lito, and then the the Young Bucks. Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation with them one time where we brought uh, Brian Kendrick and Chris Saban was a part of it, and we were talking to them like you know, kind of like if you give us the ball, we can run with it, you know. Just got to give us something. Yeah. And it was going to get better from there, supposedly. And it did get better for a couple of weeks. And then the pay-per-view, which did really good. And then it was like back to wherever we went, you know? Yeah, because they, they did have sort of the build for Destination X, the pay-per-view, which was, you know, considered one of the, the greatest pay-per-views for TNA, uh, definitely for the year. And, uh, and it, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even built that good. It wasn't advertised as much. Mm -hmm. It was still advertising Bonfo Glory series when that's like in November or October. <laughs> yeah. We didn't get, you know what I mean? Like, uh, usually they uh, they do an impact before the, the, the actual pay-per-view mm -hmm. where they highlight, actually, you know, the pay-per-view and they put like stories or like little vignettes or whatever and we didn't get any. <laughs> it was right. like, tune in for Bonfo Glory and this is like the TV show before the pay-per-view. Right. And so, oh. Well, do you feel like uh, one of the problems uh, with that, that build was that they brought in a lot of uh, new X Division guys instead of capitalizing on, uh, you know, a lot of guys that were already on the roster and, you know, were already capable of, of that style? Yeah, like, uh, for us, it was like a, you know, 50-50 thing, like where... We we were always there in the back and getting used to like dark matches or I you know uh, like little jobber things here and there, but we wasn't used how they wanted to be used. And just to bring in different people or we wanted more people just so we can have obviously better matches. But the the real problem was is that they needed more TV time or mm -hmm. like me and my friends talking about. We just needed like maybe an extra channel like how Raw has SmackDown. And we kept hearing about that, like maybe it was going to happen. Yeah, rumors of like a second show coming up in the works. Yeah, that would have been awesome, like, mm -hmm. to give us more time like that and bring more guys in, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Um, uh, what was the uh, the atmosphere like backstage? What was what? The, uh, the atmosphere like backstage? Uh, you know, I, <laughs> we had clips, like everybody had a little clip here and there. Obviously, you probably know mine, <laughs> but uh, like, it's it's kind of like, you know, when you go to like a Christmas party and there's like family, you're like, ah, uh, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like, uh, you know, you mind your business, you know, they mind their business kind of thing. It's uh -huh. like a high and by kind of thing. There's a, uh, some of them who are really good friends, almost I consider like family. Yeah. Uh, and, and then some of them I don't even see. Like, yes. I don't even get to see where they're at. If they're even on the show, I just actually see when they're 
in the in the actual ring. Like, oh, yeah. oh, he was here. Okay. <laughs> it sounds it sounds a little bit like high school. You know, everyone's got their little groups that they hang out with. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. oh, I graduated with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was like cool the cool locker room where we couldn't go into. You know, like the cool kids, and then there was like a uh, outcast guys, and mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't even know where to put ourselves. I don't. We were like maybe. You guys ever seen the movie Warriors? Right. Yeah. I have. Yeah, I felt like we were like the baseball furies kind of. <laughs> oh. We were just there, just getting ready to fight somebody, but mm-hmm. you know, money all business kind of thing. But that's oh. how it was. It was just, uh, just weird. Was, I guess also that so many different people had different things to do, and uh, usually we didn't do as much, so we just stood, like you know, in our little locker room. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Whenever they uh, whenever they brought in uh, Hogan and Bischoff, you know they obviously they changed the uh, the six sided ring to the four sided ring, made a few other changes. Uh, do you feel like the revamping was was helpful or hurtful to to what TNA is now from what it was? Um, to TNA, uh, to me, I, I liked like the idea of uh, being different, you mm-hmm. know. And the six sided ring, if you think about a six sided ring, even though I know Mexico had it before us, but you think about TNA automatically. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, working in it, to me, kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, uh, you know, you, you're brought up to learn how to rest in the force out of ring, how to run the ropes, your footing is all changed up mm-hmm. in this new uh, six out of ring. I still didn't know how to, like, run. I usually get confused. A lot of people get confused when you see them, when they slam somebody and they don't know where to hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so many turnbuckles and then the, the ropes. Mm-hmm. But uh, to TNA, I think it hurt them a little bit just because that's, you know, it began to be something that they were known for, like the six out of ring. Oh, that's cool. That's different. Yeah. Every time I heard about it, TNA, they would say the six out of ring thing. So. Yeah, it helped, it helped you all stand out from any other wrestling organization yeah. in America. Yeah. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, could, could you maybe touch on your thoughts of uh, the Sangriento gimmick and maybe, like, whose idea it was and how you felt about it and and if you felt it was presented as a um as an answer to Sin Cara? Who sang Rienzo? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> um that is like a long kind of story, but I'll shorten up real quick for you guys. Uh I always wanted to wrestle under the mask, that's why another reason why I became a wrestler. Just because I love the whole blue blazer, killer bees killer bees kind of mysterious, you know, high flying look. And uh, I always had in the back of my mind, like, you know, everybody kind of who saw me would picture me in the mask. Like, uh, I did it for MLW, I did it for All Japan, I did it for Hustle. And everybody would just put me in a mask and, you know, consider me like a superhero kind of high flyer guy, and they just wanted me in it. And i I grown to like it, you know. It's cool to be under a hood, and you can do whatever you want, and you know, uh, <laughs> kind of make up your own kind of character or whatever. So okay. I was, uh, I wanted to do it in TNA, but... I was kind of waiting for them to to throw the idea to me first because, mm-hmm. you know, um, that's my problem. <laughs> like one of my <laughs> biggest problems is that I'm too humble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of too quiet where people just see, uh, you know, they just probably, probably make up an idea or a story and they're like, oh, Red, we're, Red will be fine with it. You know, he's not going to say anything anyway. He'll just do it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that would, you know, everybody knows me for being quiet or whatever, but people who really know me know that I'm not quiet. Mm-hmm. I'm actually very talkative and very bitter, actually. <laughs> actually, <laughs> um, but uh, the thing, uh, Bischoff brought this thing, uh, the character, the mask character, to me, and he was. This was before Sinkata came out. This was before, and uh, he was like, you know, you should be, you should consider working on the mask. Have you ever worked under a mask before? And I said, yeah, I did it for like all Japan and different companies. He said, how do you feel working under a mask? I said, I would love it. It's awesome. That's actually, you know, probably something that can help me get a little more charisma. I probably, you know get me to have more character, you know, character-wise kind of thing, where it can build something cool, and then maybe I can take up the mask later and then do whatever from it. So I was cool with the idea. I was just waiting for it to happen, and then, you know, show up the show, it didn't get to happen. Uh, I didn't pitch no ideas about the mask or nothing like that, or, or even the character. Then it kind of happened like this, and I kind of took it like this. Shinkata came out. Then they gave me the 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 costume. Then they not only did they give me a costume after he came out, they gave it to me and there was no story or character behind him. It was just a whole bunch of 
kind of like they threw it to me like, hey, do what you want with it. But then they gave me, like, rules about it, but then they kept switching it every show. Wow. Every 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 taping was a different idea for the character. And I didn't, I didn't want to debut a mass character like that, you know what I mean? I wanted to put my info in it. I wanted mm-hmm. to talk about it. I wanted this to be cool. I wanted the mask to be cool, the, the, the gimmick to be cool. And I was asking him at first, is it going to be me under the hood, or is it going to be me uh, making believe I'm somebody else, you know? like. Eh. And it was just a whole lot of ideas thrown. And then first time I wore it, they just gave it to me. They said, here's the gimmick. And I looked at it like, what the hell? <laughs> and I said, what is this? And to me, it looked like a purple octopus, you know? And I, <laughs> I didn't know if they wanted me to be, you know, like myself in it or whatever. So I was asking questions. They said, don't be yourself. Just do, you know, whatever in the gimmick. Every, do all the moves that Red doesn't do in this. So I'm a different luchador or whatever. So I was like, all right. Mm-hmm. I tried to do that. I think it was an explosion match or whatever. And, uh, it's kind of like harder to work in that costume just because nothing is open. Like the the nose is not open, the mouth is not open, the eyes are really like uh, screened in where it looks like you're looking through, uh, you know, like a mesh kind of. It, it's really like hard to because I haven't worked in the mask in a while. Yeah. But this one, I felt like I was like suffocating kind of. But I tried my best, and then um, um, it got a good reaction. So explosion, explosion usually is the last match of, like, all their tapings, you know? And it's like when the crowd's already dead kind of thing. But he got a really good uh, reaction from being the last match on the show. Um, then the next time, it was, like, the... Because uh, like, I kept hearing also that I was going to be maybe a heel and then be part of Mexican America. Hmm. And that was kind of weird to me. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And that then happened. Then the last time I wrestled suicide, they told me just be myself. <laughs> <laughs> under the hood, just be red. And then that's when Hogan told me, if you hear them, because they were chanting my name already red on the, while I came out as angry. And so Hogan said, if you hear them chanting for you, whatever, just give them, you know, a little sign that it is you. So that's that part. That's the time that I took off the mask a little bit. So mm-hmm. I figured, all right, this is me just trying to reinvent myself, kind of, you know. But it's again, it gives me character, or whatever, and it's something I wanted to do. And I felt like with TNA, Every time they gave me something, which was cool enough for me to run with, mm-hmm. they took it away so fast from me. And it's like I never got a chance to develop. I, I I wanted, like, somebody to at least put in their effort in me and, you know, help me out. You know what I mean? Like, I, all I need is a push. You know, obviously, I can't cut the greatest promo in the world. You know, a lot of people can't. But I can work my ass off, you know, and I'm going to try. I've been there for so long. Why wouldn't you give me at least a shot? So when the shots came, it was taken away from me so quickly, and I, I didn't like that. Don't even person who gave me a chance to do anything in there, like uh, uh, promo-wise, storyline-wise, was going to be Tommy Dreamer when mm-hmm. he was working like as an agent. Then when he left, that was it for me. Like I was lost. Wow. wow. Well, with you touching on stuff that was, was taken away from you like really quickly, and, and you know, I have to agree, um, can you maybe also touch on the, the Don West thing where you know, they yeah, put like, you with him and it, was, uh, it seemed like really good and, and it just ended abruptly, like out of nowhere? Yeah, like that. That's that's one of the main ones that I'm really pissed off about. Cause uh, that it was like X Division was like on this top right there. And I'm not just saying that you know because because of me, but I'm just saying the crowd was really into me being champion down west. Like a lot of people didn't like it at first, but then they grown to like them. Those couple of shows, and I didn't really think it was gonna be uh, like kind of. I thought people were gonna like, wait. You know, he has a manager. Isn't that heelish? But then it ended up coming up good, and you know. Down West is awesome. To have Down West on my feet, you know, to start me off, that would have been, you know, it was really good. And then from what I heard, like, later on, me and Down West were going to keep on going until Down West starts getting me in trouble, kind of, like, almost healing out on me. And then I, it's like I finally cover his mouth, and then I'm like, you know, I'm sitting you talking. And then I finally break out, and I talk. And you know what I mean? Like, that would have got people behind me more. Yeah. And definitely. it would have gave me the character that I need to you know, be, you know, uh, get the extra level in wrestling. And it's like, right before, like, I just won the Bound for, you know, uh, in Bound for Glory, I won the Ultimate X match. Uh, even though the biggest pop of that match was when Daniels almost died. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> but uh, I, it was really good, and the, the Downwards thing was awesome. I, I got my action figure at the same time. I got the T-shirt at the same time. Uh, then the next show, he was like, well, they're taking me away from you. I was like, why? And he didn't know why. And he was like just saying that somebody told him that I don't need a mouthpiece. And I was like, well, 
let them just give me you for a little while more, and then they could say that, you know? Like, you can't just ask about what, what are the fans are going to think. Like, what are these people? The people are not, you know, fans are not dumb. I don't understand. Like, if you, you put me with Don West, you gave me like, a little storyline with him. Even I had beef with Homicide in the storyline where he was attacking Don West and I'm helping him or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then you take Don West away like without no explanation or nothing. And even to me, you know, like, it's just weird to me. And it's like, well, he's not coming out with you no more, so just go out there. I'm like, I'm confused. And then there I go to be stuck with nobody, you know what I mean? And then it's like, uh, since it get, like I feel since the fans get changed up with me on so many gimmicks, like the thing with my, my, my little brother supposedly, like how we came out, I uh, invited him to help me with Jeff Jarrett and beat up Jeff or whatever for the MMA challenge thing. And it was, it was over, you know, the first day it happened, people bought it. I did, and then again, I showed a little bit of character, whatever, and it was going to lead to, like, I had a whole thing about funny promos with him. You know what you could do with that? With a, a huge, small brother, especially, like, you know what I mean? He looks like me, this guy. So right. yeah. it, it, it would have been awesome. Like, you just just to, just to see me talking down to him, you know, like, backstage and, like, you know, and, and just him. You know what I mean? Like, we had so I'm many funny things brother. to do, like, me and him were talking about it. It would have been awesome. It would have gave me so much. That's what I want. That's how I am in real life. I'm a funny guy. I'm always doing with the jokes. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm in Brooklyn, and you know how it is. <laughs> can you guys hear me good? I'm sorry? Yes, we can. Can you guys hear me good? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can hear just background noise. But uh, um, just stuff like that, you know, we had so much ideas. I was so happy. He was happy. And it's like the next day, the next taping, he shows up in a, in a suit. And I'm telling him, <laughs> what are you doing in that suit? He said, um, yeah, they, they're putting me kind of like in the middle of the mafia thing where I'm going to give a message or whatever. And I'm, I'm like, okay, that's cool, but uh, where's my suit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I just came out with you last week, you know, and, and I, how are they going to... And I said, well, what's going to happen with me? He was like, I don't know. They didn't say nothing about that. Uh, and then I kept talking. So the people, you know, like, oh, you know, in time, we'll bring them back to you and you guys can do something, whatever. So I'm like, okay, these guys have to do something with me and, and attack him or something. Mm-hmm. But then... Nothing happened. And again, it got erased from people's minds. I'm not his brother. I was just a guy who, you know, unveiled him, kind of. Yeah. And it's, it's a real big slap and a disrespectful slap to my face. Cause it's like, I've been there so long. I've been humble this whole time. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't say, I don't say anything. I don't, I don't, you know, even, you know, I do say a couple of things, but I, I'm pissed off at the fact that I should have said things. I showed my mouth when I was there, like more, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it's like since they thought all that like of me, like uh, oh he won't he won't matter he won't care blah blah. It just it pisses me off because it's like disrespectful. And then it's like they take him away and then they leave me to you know not not being booked, not even being on TV. And he is undefeated or he's on TV all the time cutting promos and mm-hmm. it's like nothing of me. And and I'm home just looking at this like wow you know <laughs> they Thanks. just said hey Red do us a favor get him over and then just break out. Yeah. Yeah, while while you, while you guys were backstage, did y'all did y'all ever feel like you know you mentioned Tommy Dreamer was sort of someone that you could go to who would you know try and help you out? Was there anyone else backstage who was helping you guys out if y'all had any kind of issues like that or? Yeah, like it, it, it was usually like uh, I don't want to name that many names, but I, I know uh, it was D'Lo was awesome. Terry Taylor when he was there is awesome. You know, mm-hmm. Dreamer uh, when Savio was there, Savio was awesome. Uh, you know, uh, um, Pat Kenny, they're all guys who helped out and stuff like that. And it's, it's like, the, and then I, just, I wanted to believe what they said, and I'm not saying they, li- they were lying, but every time I had a match and, you know, they said it was awesome, blah, blah, blah or if they had something for me, or even mm-hmm. Vince, every bitch, I don't have no problems with none of them, you know, like every time I see them, it's high and by, and it's cool. You know, Hogan uh, says what's up to me, and we talk for a little bit, and it's like, I I feel like that they German, they genuinely like me and it's like when I go back to the, to the locker room or when I go back home and then I come back there it's like I don't know what's going on you know am I just visible for a couple of seconds you know what I mean like yeah. I just feel like I just feel like it's just been one big lie to me like oh yeah you know you did good and then it's like I walk away and it's like you know uh, that kid doesn't know that he's not going to be using anymore that's how I just feel you know, I'm just probably talking you know with a little angry business right now but that's how I just felt like and obviously I'm not gonna blame them either because I never said anything like that much to them. I said I said to a couple of people, people that 
listen to me or whatever, but they just told me just to wait it out and you know, see what happens. Mm-hmm. But you, I can't do that no more, man. I can't. Can I have so a family. <laughs> I have things to do. Like, mm-hmm. I've been there too long. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Like, I got to stand up somehow. And I, I see how every other place is blowing up, doing their thing, and uh, the v, they changed up their whole game by putting CM Punk on top, and mm-hmm. it looks like they were bringing more cruiserweights in and stuff like that. So, I'm a, you know, I'm still young that I think of, but my body, I don't feel like crap, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a couple of years in here, and I, I still want to make it to where I'm supposed to be. Definitely. Um, Larry, down the line, do you see yourself going back to TNA, or, I mean, do you have, do you have any plans to go <laughs> like, to w, WWE, yeah. or like... Like, yeah, like, like I said, this business is, uh, you know, I, I've been released from TNA by, you know, three or four times, I came yeah. right back. I'm not saying I will never go back because this business is like a revolving door, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, you never know. You know, you never know. You can say I'm not gonna be one of these, but I'm never going back. Oh, and then I end up showing up. You know, they're like sell out. But uh, it's not like that. I don't. I'm not saying I hate TNA. I don't hate TNA. I love TNA. I love what they did for me. You know, they helped me out in so many ways. I just wanted that extra. You know, I wanted them to to kind of like treat me, you know, like one of their top guys because mm-hmm. it's ever since I've been there. I've had top matches, and, you know, I, I, everybody in the back, you know, loves me or whatever, and it's just like, I feel like I wanted to get that, you know, across in, in TV time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everybody who really knows me, they, they know that I have all this stuff, and it's like, it's never been used, and every time it's about to be there, it's about to be used, I'm about to talk, I'm about to open up, you know, and be a character finally, and it's like, it gets taken from me. And it's like, damn, now, you know, how am I going to get this back? And then I get one back. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so I, yeah. I'm trying, man. Like, I, like I see, I'm going to do whatever, uh, whatever's right for me at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, also money wise, because, uh, if I don't, uh, challenge that part either, then I'm never going to get respected in that department either. You know what I mean? And yeah. it, it's, uh, that's obviously another reason why people, you know, wrestlers do this. I'm not saying that I, I need all this money, but I do need a little bit more. Cause just because I've been wrestling for like 13 years, and it, my from the stuff that I did, my body, you know, it, it gets beating. And I, I see how Ray is now, and uh, yeah. I don't want to be like that. You know, I, I give so much respect to Ray because he still flips and does his thing, you know, and he's he's all beat up. And it's like every five yeah. seconds, you got to get surgery on something. Yeah. Uh, I I can't like I love my kids too much. Yes, I do have two kids, <laughs> and uh, any any place that wants to take me, you know, I'm I was looking right away. I was looking straight at WWE, Ring of Honor, New Japan, uh, anything. You know, I I, I just love to wrestle, and I just love uh, those companies. I always wanted to do them while I was part of TNA. Mm-hmm. Obviously, besides WWE, because you can't do that. But um, right. <laughs> it just never it just never happened. Like I felt like. Uh, uh, somebody was holding me back from doing it because I see other people like the Young Bucks are doing it, the Christopher Daniels did it, uh, the Motor City Machine Guns went to Japan and stuff. And it's like I heard when they called to me, uh, nobody told me anything. So right. I don't know what was that about. But have oh, you well. uh, have you been in any kind of contact with uh, WWE, Ring of Honor, or any any of those any of those bigger groups? With Ring of Honor, yeah, and with WWE, I have some contact, and I, I've been talking to a couple of people, but. The main people I want to talk to, uh, I haven't talked to yet, but um, let's. I'll see about that. Hopefully, uh, it's all good things. Yeah, they seem to. You know, WWE seems to be changing a few things, like you said earlier. So, uh, who knows? Maybe we can see Amazing Red on on WWE programming in the future. Uh, what would What would you say is one of your your dream matches? Someone that you haven't haven't really fought yet that you would like to go in the ring with? I, I've been promoting this since like. Uh, <laughs> 2002, 2003. Uh, I, I, I think I need to. It's not that I, you know, it's a dream match right now. I think I need to do it before he leaves. And he actually probably just got injured. But I want to wrestle Ray so yeah. bad. Yeah. And uh, especially when I saw him, such a cool guy. And like Eddie girl, girl told him like so much about me, and he, he was telling me he heard so much about me. And just from, from the conversation with him like that, I was like, I need to wrestle this guy. I have to. Because mm-hmm. I think it would be you know, super awesome, and everybody wants to see it. I've been compared to him since I came out, you know, and it's like, 
it's like a respect thing for me. Like, I, I need to wrestle him. Nah, I kept doing little Twitter things here and there, making little videos, and, like, calling him out, like, if it's going to happen soon. But, like I said, in this business, you never know. So, it's funny. Maybe before he leaves, I can probably get in on him. Because <laughs> yeah. so uh, I, I see him kind of retiring soon. I, yeah. Just because of injuries, man, like... I don't know how much somebody can take. Just bust into a house show or something and be like, hey, man, just 15 minutes real quick. Just just let me go. Just slide in. <laughs> Give him 30, man. Come on. Yeah, well, 30. you know, I was just saying, you know, 15 to, 15 to get going. <laughs> <laughs> That's next. That's next on my mind. There you go. Uh, going to the past uh, just uh, a little bit, uh, what would you say your your best memory uh, is with your trainer, uh, Mikey Whipwreck? Best memory, what, wrestling-wise or him ribbing me? <laughs> <laughs> Either no, or. Just, like, something that's memorable to you, you know, just something, I guess, that stand out, you know, about him or just anything. Um, I, I was Mikey, like, every day that I practiced with him, every time he was on the road with him, was always something special just because uh, the kind of guy Mikey is. He's, he's awesome, man. He's, he's an awesome guy. Like, one of the things I can tell you is every time he has a retirement match, <laughs> he still didn't retire, but he had three of them so far. But he always calls me to to do it with him, and it's either I tag against him or I wrestle against him. But I love the fact that every time he decides to retire, he calls me, you know, <laughs> and wants to put me in the match with him. But uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't talked to him actually or seen him in a while. But uh, everything with him is awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So right, you were born in Puerto Puerto Rico, correct? Yes. Um. How lo- about how long did you live there before moving to the states? Um, that part of my life really to me was like a kind of like a blur. But I, I would say maybe three or four. I came to the states. Oh, okay, but but you you've been back to wrestle in Puerto Rico. So I was just wondering, maybe you could maybe touch upon how in Puerto Rico the face heel dynamic is taken like so seriously as compared to like here oh, in the yeah. states. Maybe yeah. just talk about that a little bit for you know our listeners who who, who may not be familiar with that. Yeah, uh, Puerto Rico is a different type of wrestling. Like uh, for all the fans or whoever was hearing this, uh, I'm not saying that wrestling fake right now, but all their wrestling is believed to be real. Like uh, you cannot be hanging out with the bad guy at all. And uh, the fans fight for you. Like they will kill somebody if uh, wow. if they wanted to over there, because that's how they much you know how much that's how much they believe it. And the thing about me seeing wrestling not fake is because everything about wrestling is real. Besides, obviously, it's predetermined. But you know, obviously, the falls and everything will kill you. But in Puerto Rico, the fans believe it to the fact where if you're beating up their face, like their their superhero. Uh, actually, I'll give you an example real quick. When I went over there with my cousins, we were playing like a heel gimmick. Uh, we wasn't playing it as good because of we heard how Puerto Rico is and we have to watch out because they don't really have security. There was a match we did where we were pissing the fans off and they threw batteries at us, you know, oh, and oh, uh, wow. they hopped over. They tried to fight me. Dang. This big guy tried to fight me. He came over and tried to fight me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I ran away, you know, because there's a whole bunch of them. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, uh, it, the, the, like, and you can do anything over there. You get a super reaction. Like, we were going over there doing all these flips and all this crazy stuff, and, like, we heard nothing. Like, it was a pin drop, you know, because they, you know, they they were confused. You were moving too fast with them. And uh, back in the day, you know, me and my cousins, we had no psychology. We were just doing high spot, high spot, high spot. Then it was like uh, somebody pulled us over. I think it was, I forgot who his name was, but somebody like Fabio, he was just like, listen, you don't have to do all that stuff. You know, you do... This is real face against heel stuff over here. This is what they believe in. Mm. And uh, it's a good guy and it's a bad guy. All you got to do as a bad guy is just, uh, you know, obviously do one move and take some people, and that was it. So the next day we used what he said. And uh, from from the pop that we will get over here in the States for, like, a Spanish fly or, like, some kind of sick triple T move we'll do, we got that same pop over there for a body slam. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, and it's like obviously over here they're hungry to see you like kill yourself and it's like you put a headlock on, they're like boring, you know. A lot of people <laughs> a lot of fans are real uh real spoiled, you know. Um but I'm over there, they, they sit and they watch and they're into it every second of it. Every second of it. You don't hear they will never say boring because, you know, it's it's so real to them. Like uh everything, everything. Slams, punches, when the bad guy like 
curses them out. They they really walk to them, you know. It's like they spit at them. They how do you find a way to bring batteries to a show? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like really cool, but really frightening at the same yeah. time. Uh, yeah, it was, it was scary. Where are you at, me at the first, face? You know, it was it was really scary at first. Uh, because one of the batteries actually almost hit me and it hit the floor. And when it hit the floor, it left like one of those little sparks. Wow. Uh, that's, how, that's how hard they threw it, you know? So <laughs> I was like, you guys get out of here. We're too little to be uh, used right now. Wow. You show up there, please let me be the face tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Especially me, like. The little kids wanted to fight me just because I was like, <laughs> you know, five, five, six, hundred and twenty pounds. I was yeah. super little. I'm surprised I got booked anywhere. That's how small I was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they they wanted to kill me, little kids. Very so, nice. Um, well, not not very nice on that part. But, <laughs> but uh, no, it's a good experience though. I would love to go back. Uh, and that's another thing on my list too. You know, just in case. Uh, yeah, I'll probably give Savio a call and, and visit my mom at the same time. So. Um, yeah, any any place that will have me, I will be gladly sure to help work and, uh, and, and do whatever. Very nice. So, um, like CZW, like, have you ever uh, thought about uh, going back there or maybe interested in Involve or Dragon Gate USA? Yeah, uh, anything really. Like, um, I, I would, I wanted to Dragon Gate uh, as soon as I seen like uh, Dragon Kid and Simon, all of them. I like on mm-hmm. um, uh, VHS tapes. Just because they reminded me and my cousins of like our our style that we brought to the Indies, and I was like, wow, you know, they got people in Japan who do the same stuff we do. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it was funny because at one point, you know, everybody was like, oh, uh, like new indie wrestlers or even old school indie wrestlers, we would take tapes from Japan and then copy their moves like in a certain way, and then unveil them over here in the Indies, and like as if it was ours. I I went when I went over there, uh, you know, uh, Quiet Storm. You guys heard of Quiet Storm? Yes. Yeah, he he lives in the dojo over there in Kainsai or whatever, and they do the same thing. They they get indie ta- uh, uh, indie tapes and they steal our moves. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess at the same time uh, we were looking at each other like that, and I always wanted to go to Dragon Gate since I saw the the tapes, and just because you know it was so uh, familiar the w- the way they worked. Mm-hmm. And but I never got to it, every time I wanted to go. I was either in CNA or I was in. Uh, some other place, or if I was probably contemplating retirement at one point, that big space that I took in between wrestling where uh, I for my ACL, uh, it, they called me like right there. And I heard, oh, he's dragging me, he wants to use you. And I was like, oh, I can't right now because I gained so much weight and my knee is really bad still. So it's like I never got to do it. CDW, uh, same thing. You know, I would love to go back. I have no problem with them and with how they work. So, yeah. Well, so so what's next for you, Red? I mean, I know you've got the the House of Glory uh, training school going on, but uh, mm-hmm. so what's up with that? And, and, and kind of talk about what you got going on for us. Well, the good part about that is now I got more time to be with them. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, the well, House of Glory school is another thing that uh, we loved about Japan and how they have uh, a dojo, and they usually have like their students live with them and they teach them, you know, like their style of wrestling and how they were brought up. Mm-hmm. So me and my cousins always wanted to do that. We always wanted to have like a little dojo of kids, you know, of like kind of like a little soldiers and like, a little class of uh, high flying guys who know how to work and stuff like that. So we finally got it started and got a lot of students and stuff too. So which is kind of cool. And every time I can, I go and I train with them and I take photos with them. A lot of trainers usually don't get in the ring and do things with the guys. That'll just be, it'll be called like their gym and then they'll never show up and they have somebody else train. Right. I make sure I, I'm, when I'm there, I'm in the ring with them, taking these falls with them. Just so if they nice. see you doing it, they're like, oh, I definitely can do it. Very nice. Really quickly, so, who's uh, who's tougher on the students? Are you Joel, Brian XL, or Quiet Storm? Who's the tougher trainer? If you, if you ask any one of my students or Joel or Brian, it's me. Like, <laughs> I don't play that, man. Like, I don't get in there. It's, it's hard for people to understand that just because you guys see a different side of me. You know, you guys see the humble, peaceful, red, whatever, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm very bad, man. Like, <laughs> it's not even, like, bad like that. I mean, like, I'm very serious about wrestling. That's what you know, because this is, I love wrestling. Like, if you make fun of wrestling, I'll probably fight you. Like, yeah. that's how that's how much to the heart it I take it. It was some tough love. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and when I get in there, these these kids know that I don't play, like, you know, we obviously we play around because that's one thing too. About, you know, I don't like to be that hard on people, and if they can't get it, I'm not gonna bust his balls because a lot of people this is not for them. You know, a lot of wrestling fans or people who grew up can't be in this business just because uh, you know 
it's just different things. Like uh, we had this one kid with like asthma who gets like migraines when he when he bumps. You know, mm-hmm. I feel bad, but I still stay there in training, and he still comes once in a while. Just you know, I show him how to. We can do like cardio stuff and get his uh, uh, get you know a ring shape at least. But yeah, it's it's gonna be hard for him to make it into the Indies and stuff with that kind of like uh, um fault that he has. That's crazy. Like I was worried, you know, when he first bumped and stuff like that. I got up and we were really dizzy and fell, and it, you know it was hard. But uh, we finally got it open, and the, everybody's uh, all the students are cool. But I, yeah, I. When I go in there, you can see them. Like even Brian says, like, as soon as I go in there, they're all like standing up. Oh my God, what's Ray gonna do now? <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, that's houseofgloryonline.com. Yes, houseofgloryonline.com. Okay. For anybody who's interested. Yeah. Yes, okay. and there's a lot of questions on Twitter of people asking me, uh, what's the minimum age? Everything's on the website, but I'm gonna say it real quick again. Uh, I won't take anybody younger than 16, just because then it becomes like a parent issue, right. and you know. Obviously, wrestling, you're going to get hurt. Just understand that when you come to wrestling school or anything involved wrestling, you're going to hurt your body. That's that's what we do. But you really need to love this business this business to be to be a part of it and to, to dedicate yourself because this business hurts <laughs> mentally and physically. And I, tr- I try to show them everything. Mikey used to tell me when he was training me, uh, stop doing these crazy moves, stop doing these high fans stuff, you're going to hurt yourself, you're going to mm-hmm. think about it. And he was trying to make himself an example because, you know, he got all these concussions in ECW and mm-hmm. they would beat the crap out of him in ECW. And, like, he's kind of like, uh, you know, he was telling me he was going to hurt and you want to play with the kids and stuff. And I just ignored him, you know. Like, I didn't do it on purpose, but it was like I wanted to get pops. And, you know, like, when you're younger, you're hungry like that. Like, you just love the sound of the crowd and stuff. And I didn't listen and, you know, little by little, I was getting banged up. And I wish I would have took his advice <laughs> back in the day because it would have saved so many bumps and bruises. I have mm-hmm. parts of my body I don't even know what's wrong with it because I'm too scared to go to the hospital and check out. <laughs> so like my my elbows are destroyed. There's like bone chips in them. And wow. but it's just this all this all uh, stuff that's gonna happen. Any wrestler is probably gonna have bone chips. Any wrestler is gonna have torn ACLs and whatever. This is just what we do. We're we're crazy. You gotta be crazy to be in here. Like seriously, it's all you really about gotta how be, there's something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you have like any upcoming like indie shows or any any kind of promotions that you might be working with right now for you know anyone who might be in the area? I got two coming up uh, this week. Uh, Friday is a uh, ICW in Queens. Mm. Um, there's an eight man tournament. I'm wrestling Homicide like the first round and uh, Sammy Callahan, Danny Demanto. Uh, they were part of that. And Saturday, I'm wrestling in the four way. Uh, uh, PWS since it'll be uh, in Ronkonkoma. I don't know the website for, the, for both of them, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, uh, just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, yeah. And uh, do you have like any other uh, websites or? Yeah, Facebook, like Twitter, websites. Anything you want to plug before we let you go? Yeah, um, my Twitter. Everybody keeps thinking that I'm am fake or something like that. Um, <laughs> I tried to make four or five videos explaining that it's really my Twitter. My Twitter is <laughs> at um. This is me using the Twitter. And the number one. (laughs) At Amazing Red 1. And then, yeah, the number one. At Amazing Red 1. And it's like, everybody keeps on, this is not the real red. And because I don't have the verified sticker. Right. They stopped verifying people a long time ago. I can't get it, you know? And you got to be like (laughs) The Rock or or, or, or somebody (laughs) to get that, you know? I'm never probably going to have it. But, um, Uh, yes, that's me, guys. So, uh, very nice. Amazing, Red. It has certainly been a pleasure. We certainly do appreciate you taking some time Thanks and, uh, a lot, Ray. We and joining you. us. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. And, uh, and, and we do hope to see you on some of the uh, the bigger networks here coming up, maybe in the yeah. in the near future. Thank you, guys. So, I, I hope it comes soon, too. So. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but thank you, guys. Have fun, guys. Yeah, definitely. Take care. All right. You too. All right. Bye.